Hi, welcome back, all of you. Now, today we are going to discuss the third part in fluid and electrolyte management of a patient. In in succession to the previous videos, today we are going to discuss few important points regarding body fluid changes as a part of fluid and electrolyte management of any patient especially the surgical one so in this video we are going to focus on basically two things few important points regarding the normal exchange that do occur in normal fluid and electrolyte homeostasis in our human body and the second important thing we'll go through the normal composition of various gastrointestinal fluid like gastric secretion what is the composition of gastric secretion the bile pancreatic secretion small intestinal secretion and colonic fluid what are the compositions of these fluids and what is the relative difference between these compositions why it is important to know these compositions yes this is a very good question and this is important to know before managing any patient who requires fluid or electrolyte therapy is that that we should know how our body is managing the intake or the output with the help of kidneys the lungs and other organs that is involved they are involved in the metabolic processes so we must know the normal requirement of our human body sodium or potassium or chloride or bicarbonates where they are secreted where they are not secreted all these things we will cover in this video the relative difference between the various gastrointestinal secretions okay so let's start with the today's video as far as this normal exchange of fluid and electrolyte is concerned usually a human being we take 2 liters of water per day on an average depending on the weight of the patient or a human being in general it may vary from let's say 1.8 liters to 2.5 liters or sometimes 3 liters depending on the weight but the average we are going to take the normal intake is 2 liters of water out of this 2 liters of water average per day water intake almost 75% of this it comes from intake of fluid oral intake it could be in the form of plain water or it could be in the form of liquid diet containing water that is oral intake 75% roughly it amounts to 1.5 liters and 25% that is 0.5 liters that is extracted from the solid food material meals we are going to take the body extract 25% of normal intake of water from these solid foods okay now let's talk about something like daily water loss intake we have discussed almost 2 liters for an adult average 
ह्यूमन बींग सिक्सटी के जी वेट अराउंड सिक्सटी के जी वेट सो वॉट इज द डेली वॉटर लॉस इनटेक इज टू लीटर्स एवरेज नाउ इन डेली वॉटर लॉस through the urine average 1000 ml or 1 liter of water is being lost and the range is 800 ml to 1200 ml through the stool around 250 ml there are some insensible losses we cannot sense but that loss is being carried out continuously and it roughly amounts to 600 ml we are talking about daily losses in 24 hours okay so insensible losses around 600 ml out of this 600 ml 75% near about is being lost by the skin or human skin and around 25% of this amount 600 ml that is roughly equals to 150 ml is being lost during normal respiratory process inspiration and expiration through the lungs this insensible loss it may increase means may become more than 600 ml whenever we are running a fever or whenever a patient is having a hypermetabolic state or whenever he or she is hyperventilating okay so fever hypermetabolism hyperventilation hypermetabolism one of the example yes increased thyroid hormone levels leading to hyperparathyroidism one of the example of hypermetabolic activity right so fever hypermetabolism and hyperventilation they may increase the insensible losses sensible losses like sweating or sometimes the pathologic loss of gi fluids are there these two things we can sense in our knowledge that is occurring sweating and the loss of gi fluids gastrointestinal fluids in both the conditions the loss of water is also there and loss of electrolytes they are also there predominantly seen in loss of gi fluids loss of water and electrolytes they both occur during this condition like vomiting diarrhea these are the examples of loss of gi fluids this is important to note that for a human body for us to clear the metabolic products the kidneys must excrete 500 to 800 ml of urine per day and it doesn't depend upon the amount of oral intake we have already taken that is not going to affect this requirement so for clearing the metabolic products must excrete 500 to 800 ml of urine per day for an adult average weight let's say around 60 kg person okay something about the daily consumption of salt the daily consumption of salt is maintained by kidneys between 3 to 5 g 3 to 5 g just for ease of understanding we are just consider the values we are discussing for an adult 60 kg around weight daily consumption of salt 3 to 5 g in 24 hours and 
our kidneys do have the capacity to reduce the sodium excretion to as little as 1 milliequivalent per day if we are running hyponatremia we are having hyponatremia any patient having less of sodium in his or her blood or serum to be more specific our kidneys may reduce the sodium excretion to as little as 1 milliequivalent per day only whereas the other way round if a patient is running hypovolemia hypovolemia means increased hemo concentration leading and the patient is also having hypernatremia increased sodium in extracellular fluid compartment obviously kidneys can excrete sodium even up to 5000 milliequivalent per day this is the range the capacity of our kidneys between 1 milliequivalent per day to 5000 milliequivalent per day now you can see how nicely our kidneys are maintaining this balance the sodium level in extracellular fluid compartment the plasma as well as the interstitial fluid the two sub compartments of ecu we have already discussed and that is not possible this balance is not possible where in patients with salt wasting kidneys this is not possible right Pace, patient with salt wasting kidneys and few important points regarding the sweat sweat is usually hypotonic as you all know the difference between isotonic hypotonic and hypertonic solution any fluid secreted by a human body isotonic means roughly between 280 milli osmol to 310 milli osmol if this milli osmolarity is there in this range the secretion or the fluid will be known as isotonic less than this hypotonic more than this hypertonic so sweat is hypotonic the osmolality is less than this and it results in only a small sodium loss the sweat whereas the gi losses the gastrointestinal losses they are isotonic to slightly hypotonic so gi losses they contribute little to net gain net gain i am talking about net gain the resultant gain or loss of free water whenever we are going to measure it in the form of total body water or the ecf or icf indirectly okay whenever these losses are there we can replace them by isotonic salt solution by giving them giving the patient the isotonic salt solution can you tell me the one of the example of isotonic salt solution yes 0.9% sodium chloride this is one of the example of isotonic salt solution but the important thing is we have previously discussed that the kidneys the previous slide i'm just again just taking the reference they maintain a tight sodium balance so whenever we are prescribing or infusing sodium chloride 0.9% the kidney function test of the patient should be within normal range 
this is important kidneys should be functioning normally right this is important till now we have discussed the normal functioning of the fluid changes that is occurring inside our human body so this is regarding the normal exchange of fluid and electrolyte in the next video just as a part of it the composition of gastrointestinal secretions we are going to discuss so let's meet in this next second video in succession see you there thank you